is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz on the Central Coast. We are joined today by Don Ortiz Legg. She is a nominee for a seat in the California State Assembly. The seat is currently held by Kacho Ashajian. He is termed out. And I'd like to speak with you about the primary. Uh, you came in first place, a very significant victory, at least that's what the pundits are saying, mm -hmm. beating your opponent by eight points. What'd you do right, Don Ortiz Leg? I mean, that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, you know, I think that what really translated to the voters was the fact of my real world experience and what I do every day, and that is, um, go out and create jobs in the clean energy industry, as well as solve problems. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah. I was driving on Madonna Road Avenue, I think that's what it's called. Madonna Road. Madonna Road, and I saw a very large poster with your name on it. Mm -hmm. And I think on the D, there's a hard hat. Yes. And it really got me thinking, you know, that was put there intentionally. <laughs> you knew what you were doing when you put that hard hat on the D. Right. What does it mean to you? What were you trying to convey? What are you trying to convey? Yeah. Well, thank you for asking about yeah. that because it is significant. Um, you know, my experience on the Topaz Solar Farm initially was that providing an opportunity to a wide range of individuals um, to work on a, an infrastructure project like that. Let's, can we, I want to yeah. talk about Topaz. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. I mean, people may not realize how significant Topaz right. is, right. not only to San Luis Obispo County, but our state. Right, so it is um, one of the three largest solar utility scale projects um, in the world, right? Um, in, the world. In, in the world, wow. and it happens to sit in San Luis Obispo County. Right. Um, it's 550 megawatts. That equals about 180,000 homes worth of energy on an annual basis, and um, it pumped in a close to well over 400 right. plus million dollars into the economy wow. over the period of construction, and it continues to bring in um, economic benefits to the region. And it's open, it's functioning. It functions, it's owned by Berkshire Hathaway sure. Energy, BHE Renewables, <laughs> right. yes. And, um, How many jobs now that it's open? Do you know, do we know? Yes, okay. well, you know, actually, it's it's kind of interesting okay. because um, the one thing about utility scale solar is right. that, you know, there's a lot of workers that go on during the construction right. and then it really shrinks down. It is what it is. Um, but um, as this project is so large um, and Actually, right. um, First Solars now has right. one called the California Flats that's just getting ready to ah. start construction um, in uh, county line of San Luis Obispo and Monterey got County. It, got it. Um, these projects are intense during construction and then it winds down, but there's a lot of um, auxiliary uh, support right. services. And so there's probably 20 people on staff and then from there, um, there's a lot of subcontractors. Let me ask you, what has your experience through Topaz, what has it brought you? How does it inform you mm -hmm. as you run for the state assembly and presuming victory? What does that do? Well, I think it does uh, three things. Please. Um, one is that it gives me the background of knowing the importance of energy mm. in our in our sector. Right. Uh, I mean, in, you know, right. throughout the state. And as we go to this renewable portfolio, it's going to be very important on the choices that we make as communities, as a state. Um, th third, excuse me, mm. second, it's it's given me an insight to the regulatory atmosphere that many mm. businesses, including building infrastructure, and infrastructure is a big piece Piece in our state. We need infrastructure and how can we streamline this process? That's, a, I think mm. that's really one of the most important pieces. But the third piece, of course, is what we started talking about and that's job skills. Right. And you can't create jobs until you create skills. And we have a skill deficit in our state um, and in our region. And this brings into the whole entire um, 35th district. So mm. it runs from all of San Luis Obispo County, south of Lompoc, mm -hmm. so northern Santa Barbara County. And so we have individuals between the ages of 19 and 30 that are really don't have a career mm. path. And these are the things that I really want to work on. We also have individuals who are looking to reskill for um, 21st century um, jobs. And, and that's another piece. So you mentioned the energy sector. Mm -hmm. Here in San Luis Obispo County, we have the Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant, largest private employer in the county, I think about 1,500 jobs, That's including your husband, I understand. 
And Diablo Canyon has announced that it will be closing in nine years. Yes. Now, that's a hit. Yeah. You know, we can talk about whether it should or should not close. We're not going to go there now. Yes. It's closing. Yes. And so, presuming victory, if you're a member of the state legislature, what can you do to, A, help those that are going to need new jobs in this county, and B, we're going to lose all that energy. I mean, God bless Topaz, but I don't know. Is it? Is it a? Does so, it make it up? So, in order for this to actually close, you know, um, Diablo sees and P Pacific Gas and Electric right. see the future, and the way that the state has laid out its energy portfolio means that there will be replacement energy okay. in the long term. And what's really unique about Diablo in this closure announcement is that no other plant in the world has had the opportunity to plan for nine years oh, and to I provide see, right. the kind of support to our community. So we are blessed. Mm. We are extremely blessed. And I think that it's going to be um, the kind of conversations that I'm looking forward to have, both with the utility as well as the community and at the state level on how we can repurpose the asset and also kind of wean ourselves off of the asset. So let's do talk about it. I mean, like you said, I mean, it's still gonna operate for nine years and then there's the wind down. So when that asset will even be available for repurposing is hard to know. Yeah. But there's a thoughts? lot of, yeah, there's that a lot thoughts? of things. There's a lot of things that we just are still trying to figure out. Right. The first the thing that's most important with the Diablo piece is that their, their plans right now is to make sure that during this nine year period that their workforce is well taken care of and that it's operating safely like it always has. That's the primary you know goals right. at this point. As we start looking towards the future on how to utilize what is there as far as the transmission infrastructure and all, that's a big question. That involves the Utilities Commission, that involves a lot of different players. Does it involve the state legislature? I would think that, you know, the state legislature had something to do with the whole piece yeah. changing. Yeah. So I'm hoping that, you know, there's a there's a role there, of course, within workforce development, within, right. you know, tra a training center, perhaps. I mean, energy is moving very quickly and there's all sorts of new developments every day. And even within our small community, we've got some real movers and shakers that we could um, use and, and develop new opportunities. Let me ask you, as you're on the campaign trail, are people talking to you about their fears regarding the closure of Diablo? Or are they talking to you about the drought? Or are they yeah. talking to you about what's on their minds? I think the things that is on the minds of yeah. most individuals is is water well, yeah, is, yeah. is really critical. Then the need for infrastructure on water, the need to understand and how can we repurpose ourselves in our relationship with water. Because water, like energy, is a resource that we have to think about how we're using it. So I, I look at it as, as we did it with energy, we were able to individually take actions on changing out our light bulbs, et cetera. We can do it as businesses, and then we can do it on big utility scale mm -hmm, type mm -hmm. projects. So I'm hoping to have an influence there. Um, the second thing that people, of course, are interested in is, is our career path, right. you know, That's what you've said, yeah, and 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 the career path is so much tied to the housing path, and you know, we've had conversations about housing. I know you've had a lot mm. of conversations with other mm. electeds and leaders, right. Mike Manchek, right, of course. Um, at the Economic Vitality Corporation, which I sit on that board, and it's been a big eye opener, and it's a really. There, that's an issue that we've got to find the sweet spot. When you come back, I want to talk to you about housing. I appreciate that. Because there are a lot of questions about how do we create affordable housing. And I don't mean low-income housing. I mean affordable housing for Workforce you and I. Workforce housing. Exactly. Her name is Dawn ortiz Leg. She is a nominee for the California State Assembly. The district includes all of San Luis Obispo County as well as northern Santa Barbara County. My name is Brad Palmer. It's one of the Central Coast today. And you're watching Charter Local Edition.